Well, hello, welcome to the video. These are five things you won't know about Thanet. That's the area in East Kent, which includes Margate, Ramsgate, where I live, Broadstairs, and assorted villages. So let's get straight into it, shall we? First thing you probably don't know about Thanet concerns Margate, the trendy seaside town where the Turner Contemporary Art Gallery is situated. The thing about Margate is it always comes second. For example, it's got the second oldest theatre in the UK, which is the Theatre Royal in Addington Street. It's got the second smallest working theatre in the UK, which is the Tom Thumb Theatre, which I believe holds about 50 people. And Dreamland contains the second oldest roller coaster ride in the UK. To be fair, Margate has got a number one here because Dreamland was the first theme park in the UK. Even though it is named after a theme park in Coney Island, New York. So there you go. Normally second. Well blow your harmonica son. Four. Here's something you don't know about Thanet. Thanet has got more women than men. <gasps> For every thousand women in Thanet, there are 913 men. So that means that if you get together a thousand women in Thanet, at least seven of them will not have a man or will be sharing a man. Oh, actually, they probably all will be one person. And now for something completely different. Three. The Brown Jug Pub at Dumpton Park, which is on the edge of Ramsgate towards Broadstairs, is haunted by a teenage girl dressed in blue. But when the pub was open, people used to find things floating in their beer and things, and it was her who was trying to get attention. The pub was a cottage originally built in the reign of Charles II, and during the following century it was owned by a well-known local smuggler. He operated a cutthroat gang who would take brandy from France. One night, apparently, this girl, she was basically looking after her sheep at night, looking at them, or she was lambing them, or whatever, and whoever did it, we don't know whether the smugglers or the excise men, she got shot and killed. And her body was taken and put in the cellar of the what is now the pub. And um, to this day, people, well, to this day, because the pub is now closed, it's recently been bought by Tracy Edmund, so hopefully it will be opening soon, either as a pub or a bordello or something like that. Let's hope so. And um, apparently, when it was a pub, people used to go down to change barrels, used to see her in the corner, a girl in blue. So there you go. Two. Thanet has always had a bit of a right-wing reputation, even now. Nigel Farage chose to um, stand here during the 2015 election. Broadstairs in particular, especially in the run-up to the Second World War, was a hotbed of Nazis. It seems to be centred around a guy called Dr. Arthur Tester, who's either born in Leicester or Stuttgart, take your pick, because he has a very shady past. He was a con man, a spy, second in charge to Oswald Mosley in the British Union of Black Shirts. He was also ran a anti-Semitic right-wing news agency, which fed information to the Daily Mail and other newspapers, and it was financed directly from the German Nazi party and so he was not a nice guy and Arthur Tester put a house in Broadstairs called Naldidera in 1930. He bought it from Oswald Mosley's wife. It was pretty big, 20 rooms even though he was supposed to be bankrupt at the time. He paid £6,000 for it and he entertained lots of foreigners and lots of Nazis there. There was a picture of Hitler apparently up on the wall. A lot of the furniture had swash stickers in it and just basically he was a really committed Nazi. And he was made leader of the Thanet branch of the Black Shirts, which was which the British Union of Fascists. And they went around the area marching up and down, intimidating Jews and foreigners, beating up Jews occasionally. There's court cases where they smashed up Jewish shops in Margate and elsewhere. And so they weren't a very unpleasant lot. And most of the staff, he had 10 staff, well, eight to 10 staff at varying times at his house in Aldera. And most of them were 
members of the British Union have black shirts. But he wasn't the only one. I think what he was, was Thanet is very close to France and Belgium, so, and also as well, Arthur Chester had a big yacht, apparently in Ramsgate or in Southampton at various times. And it was easy, I suppose, to, to get people to and from France or Belgium. So I think that's probably why Broadstairs and Thanet was quite big with the Nazis in the run-up to the Second World War and beyond. But um, there were lots of them. Lord Haw-Haw, who was the guy who broadcast Germany calling, Germany calling during the war propaganda from Berlin, he was a school teacher in Broadstairs. There's a guy called Hermann Goertz, who was convicted of spying. He was called the um, Manston Spy. In 1935, he got caught. He was a pal of um, Arthur Chester. And it wasn't long before MI5 and, the, well, the local police first, and then MI5 got interested in Dr. Arthur Chester. And anyway, he ran away just before the war started in his boat and went, never to return. Ended up, apparently, in Romania working for the Gestapo. He was shot trying to escape apparently at the end of the war, but there are newspaper reports of him being seen in Africa because he's a very distinctive guy, he had a monocle and all that. There's reports of him he faked his death. So anyway, that's Broadstairs for you. <laughs> Before I reveal the final thing you definitely don't know about Thanet, just to say, if you're liking this video, please like it down below, please press the subscribe button and the bell for notifications, because that's very important, and comment down below, let me know what you think. Anyway, without further ado, here's the last thing you definitely don't know about Thanet. One. It has got more safe houses, more people hiding who are in witness protection or whatever than anywhere else in the country. Now I know this because I met somebody once who worked for the security services, shall we say. Not even allowed to say that they do work this. I think they're, they're allowed now, but then, this was about 10 years ago, basically told me that they actually do witness protection and stuff like that and really catering people who are informants or whatever and they normally send them to places like he actually mentioned Margate and also as well for you from Morecambe but apparently this area is pretty big with people who are hiding who are changing their identity and that also applies apparently to criminals I can prove this because on the last series or the series before of Peaky Blinders Alfie came to Margate to hide, didn't he? That didn't stop him from being stabbed on the beach, at Margate Beach, but just got to show, what I tell you is exactly right. I was lying out there, and the tide come in, he woke me up. I remember looking around and thinking, you know, this is hell. It looks a lot like Margate. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please like down below and join me again for my next whatever it's going to be. It might be a walk, it might be some information about my life or information about just about the area in which I live or interesting facts about whatever. So thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.